Welcome. In this video, we are going to walk through the workflow menu and the options available in the IoT Security Automation Skillet. There are three main elements to this automation. First, the next-gen firewall validation component to verify if a firewall is IoT functional. Secondly, the Cortex Data Lake enablement component. And then lastly, the topology-specific IoT config components. I'm going to pull up my local instance of Panhandler, where the necessary repositories are already imported. If you need help doing this, please refer to a previous video on the setup necessary. This skillet is set up as a workflow, similar to how home skillet is set up. The three main components previously listed are broken up into separate sections. So as you can see, we have the validation section, the Cortex data lake enablement section, and the IoT topology specific configuration section. Starting at the top, we have the target firewall's IP address or host name, username, and password. These are all necessary for us to properly commit or push configurations to the firewall. The first element is the validation. We have the option to run the validation at the beginning of the workflow to see specifically which configuration your brownfield firewall needs to run, or you can run it at the end of the workflow to verify that your firewall is completely IoT ready. We have also included a special case in this workflow. It gives the option to turn the next-gen firewall into a tap-based sensor to gain visibility into the IoT devices and the IoT traffic traversing a network. So by clicking yes to the special case radio button, the automation will create brand new configuration elements on the firewall. So brand new interface, zone, security profiles and group, security policy and log forwarding profile. The only additional checkbox you must have configured is Cortex Data Lake. So clicking the activate and configure CDL. The second element is the Cortex Data Lake enablement component. So this first checkbox, activate and configure CDL on the NGFW, will run an Ansible playbook that goes through all the setup needed to make the firewall CDL ready. So this was determined based on looking at the admin guide for IoT. So prepare your firewall for IoT security is what we are looking at. The one checkbox will configure steps three through six in this admin guide. One and two are user inputted, but three through six, our automation will do for you. So back in Panhandler, we also have the option to enable duplicate logging if your firewall is already forwarding to Panorama. So it will send logs both to Panorama and Cortex Data Lake. Looking at the admin guide, the steps after step six have to do with log forwarding profiles. So for your IoT security subscription to function, your log forwarding profiles must be CDL and enhanced application log ready. They must be enabled. So our automation gives the flexibility to either update an existing log forwarding profile or create a new one. In addition, you can choose to attach this profile to an existing security rule. The third element of this automation is the IoT readiness topology specific configuration. The first thing you must do is specify which PanOS version your firewall is running. For version 10.x, you have the ability to enable device ID on your IoT traffic source zone. Um, this increases visibility and allows you to use IoT policy recommendations pushed from the dashboard. Um, if your next-gen firewall has a DHCP server on one of the interfaces, you must globally enable DHCP broadcast sections. So clicking this will do that for you. And then also another um, optional is if your IoT and DHCP traffic is traversing a virtual wire, you must have multicasted firewalling enabled on that vWire. So clicking this will do that for you. 
for version 9.x, the options are pretty similar. However, if we are to look at the admin guide, you can see that if our firewall is acting as a DHCP server, there are quite a few more configuration changes necessary. You have to move the DHCP server to a VLAN and convert the original interface into a DHCP relay. So just by clicking this one, this one checkbox saying you want to convert the DHCP server to a DHCP relay, all of those admin guide changes will be done for you. The very last option available is to add a DHCP security policy for a named zone. And all you have to do is click submit and then it will walk through each specific skillet with you using all of this input. So if you have any more questions or would like more information about this workflow, you can visit the GitHub repositories and look at the readmes for more explanation. So that is the Palo Alto Networks slash IoT Automated Solution repository. Thank you.